Hi everyone, welcome to this GCSE Higher Revision video. There's 41 days to go into GCSE Maths exam, so keep up the hard work, you're doing really well. Yesterday we looked at direct proportion, and I said that today we'd be looking at inverse proportion, so that's what we're doing. So today we're looking at inverse proportion, so as one value increases, the other one decreases. And I'm going to go for inverse proportion today. I'm also then going to talk about the types of graphs that you might encounter whenever you're dealing with proportion, so that's quite useful as well. So I'd highly recommend whenever that bit of the video comes, you press pause and you jot down what those graphs look like and remember those as well. But today we're going to be looking at inverse proportion. If you do have the code Maths revision card, card number 63 is quite useful. It's on inverse proportion, so hopefully that's useful for you as well. But let's get started. Hi, today we're going to be looking at inverse proportion. So yesterday we looked at direct proportion, so as one value increased, the other one increased. Now we're going to look at inverse proportion, so that's whenever one value increases, the other value decreases. So let's have a look at an example. Now I'm going to go through this one for you, and I'm going to go through this part, and then this part B and C here underneath these uh, little boxes. So I'm going to go through this question for you. If you do want to, you can feel free to press pause now and try this question yourself. But I'm going to go through this one for you, and then there's some for you to try after. So we're told that y is inversely proportional to the square of x and we're told that whenever y is equal to 200, x is equal to 2. We've been asked in part A, our first part, to find today an equation connecting y and x. So in terms of this question, let's write down what we've been told. We're told that y is inversely proportional to the square of x. So y, we've got the proportional, so let's put the proportional symbol. Now when it's inversely proportional, what we do is we write 1 over and then what we're told. So 1 over x squared. So 1 over x squared. So we've got that y is inversely proportional to x squared. And then whenever it's inversely proportional, you just put 1 over and then what it's inversely proportional to. And as you can see here, as x increases, so as x increases, y would decrease. So we've got y is inversely proportional to x squared. And we're told some information, so let's get rid of the proportional symbol. So we've got y is equal to. Now we multiply this by k. And whenever you multiply something such as 1 over something by k, you would get k over x squared. So we can get rid of the proportional symbol and replace the 1 on the numerator with the k. So we've got y equals k over x squared. Now we're told whenever y is equal to 200, x is equal to 2. So we're going to substitute those values in and find the value for k. So we've got y, that's 200, so we've got 200 is equal to k divided by x squared, where well, x is equal to 2, so it's going to be 2 squared. 2 squared is equal to 4, so we've got 200 equals k over 4. Now I want to find what k is, so we're going to multiply both sides here by 4, so we're going to get the k is equal to 800. So k is equal to 800. And now we can replace the k with 800, so we're going to get the y is equal to 800 over x squared. So that's the equation connecting x and y, or y and x. And that's it, so part A we've done. That's our equation connecting y and x. So we've got y is equal to 800 over x squared. Okay, let's have a look at our next part. So our next part says, find the value of y whenever x is equal to 5. So this is the equation connecting y and x. Feel free to press pause now and work out the value of y whenever x is equal to 5. So we get that y is equal to 800 over x squared. Now x is equal to 5, so it's going to be 5 squared. Now let's work this out. So we're going to do 800 divided by 5 squared. And whenever we do 800 divided by 25, we're going to find that y is equal to, is equal to 32. So y is equal to 32. And that's it. And if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at our next part. So we've got find the value of y whenever x is equal to 10. So as you can see, the value for x is doubled here. So remember, as x one value increases, the other one decreases. So whenever we're working this out, we should hopefully get a smaller value for y because as x is increased, the value for y should decrease. So we've got the y is equal to 800 divided by x squared. So feel free to work this out now. So you get that y is equal to 800 divided by x squared, well that's going to be 10 squared. 10 squared is 100, so you're going to get that y is equal to 800 divided by 100, and 800 divided by 100 is 8, so y is equal to 8. And as you can see here, as the value for x increased, the value for y decreased, and that's it. And if you got those values of 32 and 8, well done. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. This is one for you to try, so feel free to press pause now to try this question yourself. Okay, so we're told that t is inversely proportional to the cube of l, so let's write that down. t is inversely proportional, so the proportional, and it's inversely, so 1 over the cube of l, so l cubed. So t is inversely proportional to l cubed. Okay, now let's get rid of the proportional symbol, so we're going to get that t is equal to, and we're going to replace the 1 with the k, so k over l cubed. That's what we get whenever we multiply this fraction by k, it would be k over l cubed. Now, we're less substituting our values, so we know that t is equal to 5, so we get 5 is equal to k divided by 0.2 cubed, 0.2 cubed. 
Okay, so 0 0.2 cubed, well, we're going to get the 5 is equal to k divided by, and 0 0.2 cubed would be 0 0.008. Okay, so we want to find out what k is, so let's multiply both sides of this equation by 0 0.008. So whenever we multiply the 5 by 0 0.008, we get 0 0.04 is equal to, and then we just be left with k. So k is equal to 0 0.04. So now we can replace the k with 0 0.04, so t is equal to 0 0.04 over L cubed, and that's it. So that's what we get. So that's the formula link in T and L. So we've done part A, and if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at the next two parts. So we've got work out the value of T whenever L is equal to 0 0.5, and we've been asked to work out the value of L whenever T is equal to two. So feel free to do that now. Okay, first of all, let's find the value of T whenever L is equal to 0 0.5. So we're gonna get that T is equal to 0 0.04, divided by 0.5 cubed. So let's work this out. So 0.04 divided by 0.5 cubed will give us that t is equal to 0.32. So t would be equal to 0.32, and if you got that, well done. Okay, next, we've been asked to work out the value of L whenever t is equal to two. So we're gonna then get that two is equal to 0.04 over L cubed. Let's multiply both sides of this equation by L cubed. So we get the two L cubed is equal to 0.04. Let's divide both sides by two now. So we get the L cubed is equal to 0.02. And then we wanna work out what L is, so cube root that. So we're gonna get L is equal to the cube root root of 0.02, which is equal to 0.27144417 and so on. And that could be rounded. You could round it, for instance, to 0.271 to three decimal places or something like that. And that's it. And if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at one more question before we look at the proportionality graphs. So this question, we're gonna to put together what we looked at yesterday, direct proportion, and then what we looked at today, inverse proportion. And we're gonna do one question connecting those. So we've got the A is directly proportional to the cube of C. We've got the W is inversely proportional to the square root of A. And we're told that whenever C is equal to two, A is equal to 48. And we're told that whenever A is equal to nine, W is equal to 2,400. And we've been asked to work out the value of W whenever C is equal to six. So feel free to press pause now to try this question yourself. Okay, so in terms of this question, let's write down what we've been given. So we've been given that A is directly proportional to the cube of C. So A is proportional to C cubed or A equals KC cubed. Um, actually, we've told, we've been given some information as well. We're told that so whenever C is equal to 2, A is equal to 48. So let's use that to find the value for K. So we're going to get that A, which is 48, equals K multiplied by C cubed. So that's going to be 2 cubed. 2 cubed is 8, so 48 equals K multiplied by 8 and if we divide by 8 we get k is equal to 6 so that's our first formula that a is equal to 6c cubed so that's what we've got from this uh, bit of information here the top line and that line there now in terms of the next bit of information we've got those w is inversely proportional to the square root of a so w is inversely proportional to the square root of a so that's the next bit of information. Now let's get rid of the proportional symbol. So W equals K over the square root of A. And let's use the values we've been given that 2,400 is equal to K divided by the square root of nine, so the square root of nine. And the square root of nine is three, so we're gonna get that 2,400 is equal to K divided by three. And if we multiply by three, we're gonna get that K is equal to 7,200. So now we can replace K with that, so we'll get the W is equal to 7,200 divided by the square root of A. So that's our next formula. And then we've been asked to find the value of W whenever C is equal to six. So if we use C is equal to six in here, we can then work out what A would be. And then whenever we work out what A is, we can then substitute that into here and find out what W would be. So let's do that. So whenever C is equal to six, we're gonna get that A is equal to six multiplied by C cubed. So it's gonna be six cubed. So whenever we work that out, we get that A is equal to 1,296. So we now know that A is equal to 1,296. We can substitute that in here to find the value for W. So W would be equal to 7,200 divided by the square root of 1,296. And that's equal to 200. And that's it. Okay, and let's just check that. So we've got A is equal to 6 multiplied by C cubed. Well, whenever C is equal to 6, we'd do 6 times 6 cubed, and that's equal to 1,296. We've got the W is equal to 7,200 divided by the square root of A. Well, the square root of 1,296 is equal to 36, and then 7,200 divided by 36 is equal to 200. And that's it. And if you got that, well done. 
Okay, and I just want to make sure you know what the proportion graphs look like. So if we've got y is proportional to x, so let's start off with this one. If y is proportional to x, as x increases, y increases. So it looks something like this. If you've got y is proportional to x squared, well, it'll look like the x squared graph, the quadratic graph. So it would look like that. It would curve like so. If you've got the y is proportional to the square root of x, again, as x increases, y increases. And it would look like this. And then finally, we've got the inverse proportion graph. So as x increases, y decreases. And it would look like this. And you'd recognize this from the reciprocal graph. And that's it. So it's important you know what these proportion graphs look like. And that's it. So in this video, we've looked at inverse proportion. Hopefully you found this video useful. And if you have found it useful, please like it and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Now, remember yesterday we looked at direct proportion and today are directly proportional to it. And today we looked at inversely proportional. What I would now say is now is the right time to try the practice question. So in the description below, I highly recommend you have a look at those practice questions. There's obviously 41 days to go. So tomorrow will be 40 days to go to GCSE maths exam. So we're getting there. Three o'clock tomorrow will be the next video, so hopefully I'll see you then for the next one. Cheers. Bye.